I read 10 books in February, so let's talk about them. I have made a promise to myself to actually do wrap-ups this year because I kind of fell off the cliff of doing them last year. And the point of YouTube, booktube, is to talk about the books that you read and give them reviews. And so it really is just like the, supposed to be the staple of my channel and yet I haven't been doing them so that's on me. So now I'm gonna make sure that I do my wrap up. So let's talk about the 10 books I read in February. February, I didn't really have too much of a TBR. I just kind of wanted to read a bunch of romance books and that's what I did and I was very happy with that. So the first book that I read in February is Royally Not Ready by Megan Quinn. So we have Lily and she's just a normal girl living in South Beach, Miami and she has a traveling bikini like stand where she like sprays people in wet t-shirt concerts and sells bikinis to the beachgoers of Miami Beach and basically one day this guy comes out of nowhere and he's like you are actually the heir to this like small kingdom in like the Scandinavian area um and she's like what and her parents are dead so she can't really like talk to anyone about it and she's basically like down the line of succession but because of circumstances she's the air. So she has to go to this country. It's, I forget how to pronounce it. And, um, so I'm not going to try, but it's like, it's supposed to be like a small island in the like Scandinavian Arctic circle. So she goes there and she's like fish out of water and she's with Keller, who is her bodyguard. And he, you know, is pretty close to the king. And so he's trying to train her like how to be a princess to a nation. And so they clearly butt heads because she is not raised with any kind of like royal upbringing. She really doesn't understand a lot of the decorum. Um, but they slowly like form a bond. So I ended up giving this one, I want to say like 3.5 to 4 stars, probably more on the 3.5. I think my issue with this was just that the writing was a little bit immature at times and Lily was so over the top immature that I like just wanted to shake her a little bit. I was like, girl, what are you doing? Um, it was fun. It was real spicy. Like I did think that the tension between Lily and Keller was done really well and I thought I like the exploration of like this country and like her embracing the traditions even though she didn't know about them before and like what it takes to step into the princess role. Um, but yeah, I just think her character um, was just so over the top immature it brought me out of the story a little bit because I was just like this is a grown woman she shouldn't be acting like this but besides that overall good romance I think there might be another one I don't know but we'll see I do love a good royal romance so this was overall fun all right where is this book that I read my room is a mess okay so next I read happenstance by Tessa Bailey I have just kind of was catching up on some of the romances that I bought a while ago and didn't read and you guys know I love Tessa Bailey so this book basically like if you've been following her TikTok you've seen that she has been like talking about writing a rom-com why choose and this is her take on the why choose genre so we have Elise her and these three hot guys get stuck on the Roosevelt tram you can see here and um they just like form this kind of connection and they all find her and they're like we want to all date you and she's a little bit of a commitment phobe so was it outside the realm of like possibility of anything happening yes it was a little bit hard for me to like believe into the the romance but i did end up enjoying it and like the guys ended up getting along there was no sword crossing so um i don't know what the right polyamory term would be for it but it is you know this is a poly book it's a why choose book um but you know it was tessa bailey she brought the spice there was some there was some real good spice in here and i i had fun so i ended up giving this four stars next i read a book from one of my other favorite romance authors and that is loath to love you by ali hazelwood this is a bind up of all three of her novellas i buddy read this with keely over at vampire keely and it was so much fun because it's just three short stories so it's super easy to get through. I pretty much read a story a day. So and, and these are all based off of her fan fiction so they have that kind of like fan fiction tropey vibe to it which I have a lot of fun with. So in the first book we follow Mara and Liam and basically like she is an environmental engineer and he's a lawyer and her advisor passes away and gives her like the house that she owned but it turns out her nephew was also there so they have to live together under one roof so it's like a forced proximity kind of thing 
it's good. If you like Allie Hazelwood, you will like these stories. If you don't like her works, I don't know how you would feel about them, but you there's a the greater chance of you liking these if you like fan fiction and if you like Allie Hazelwood. And the second book um, follows Sadie and Eric, and they basically have like a meet cute and then like something happens on their little meet cute and then they don't like each other and they work in the same office building and they get stuck in an elevator together and they have to hash out their feelings so again another beloved fan fiction trope and then in the third one we have Hannah and Ian and she always thought that like he wasn't into her um, but then she gets stuck on a she's works for NASA and she's on an Arctic research mission and she gets stuck um, and you know someone has to rescue her and he may undertake that responsibility I love it I just love woman in STEM romance like obviously me being a woman in STEM having like my field not my exact field but like you know science girlies they're getting it they're getting it they are getting what they deserve after working hard in the lab all day they come home to some good tea. Love them, love this book. I'm very excited to have read it and I basically gave all of them five stars because I just had a lot of fun with it. Next, I read Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey. Um, this is her new one that just came out and I have been so excited for this one for forever. So I loved it, you can see all my tabs. So we follow Hallie and she lives in this like Napa Valley small town and she's never left and then um, she fell hard for Julian. He was like an older boy at school and he's from the, the town. Like his family owns one of the biggest wineries in town but then he like left to go away to college and hasn't really come back except now he's back to write a novel like while he's on sabbatical. Um, and so she becomes his gardener and she like has had a thing for him forever and he doesn't really remember her. Uh, but then he, he is very grumpy and he keeps getting like annoyed that she's like in his annoyed but like really annoyed um if he can't stop thinking about her as she's like gardening outside and she's just like chaos and he's very stoic and it's a very true grumpy sunshine romance but i do feel like it dug a little bit more into the grumpy sunshine psyche because it really talked about how he's like very grumpy because he has a lot of like anxiety and trauma and a little bit of what i would probably call ocd and like him forming this relationship and connection with hallie like helps to kind of bring him out of that whereas Hallie has kind of lived her life like the beginning of her life she was just floating around and so she has a lot of like frenetic chaotic energy and so they kind of balance each other out very well which I appreciated because not all grumpy sunshine romances sometimes you're like how would these people actually like get along um but I like that they were pretty well balanced also I like that Hallie is described as mid-size and I I just love to see that you know makes me feel good when I read mid-size characters and the way Julian like worships her like just made me feel things you know yeah five stars loved it loved it and you know Tessa Bailey Queen Tessa Bailey she delivers on this vice also um there was a like a virginity trope in here but I felt like it was done in a way that like it wasn't a big deal which is how it should be done and so I appreciated I appreciated that from my Queen Tessa okay next was a romance -a thon that Tori from Tori Between Pages hosted and she asked me to be one of the co-hosts and so it was a week-long readathon. Yes, I do have a reading vlog. No, I haven't posted it yet because I'm a little bit behind on the order of my videos, but it is coming. So I do have that vlog and you will see it eventually. Maybe next week. I have to look at my calendar. I haven't planned out that far ahead, but it's coming eventually. So anyway, so let me talk about the books that I read during romantic a -thon. So first off, we have A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden, and this is a debut fantasy romance that's indie published, and the author actually sent it to me. And these are what the characters look like, Arwen and Kane. They're so pretty. And I love this bookmark, and I used it while I was reading. So basically, in this world, the kingdoms are named after different gemstones. She grows up like pretty poor in the Kingdom of Amber, which has war being waged upon it by the Onyx Kingdom. She basically offers her life to save her brothers with these healing abilities that she has, and so because of that, she's captured and brought to the Onyx Kingdom. So she's trying to escape, obviously, but she knows that she can't really navigate that alone. So she turns to this prisoner that is besides her and kind of like asks for his help but he's like as infuriating as he is cunning and in the Onyx Kingdom like Arwen can't really afford to trust so she really has to learn how to like navigate in this enemy territory and 
I loved it. I thought it was so good. There were so many shocking twists and turns. I ended up giving it five stars. There was like a little bit of spice. It seems like the spice is going to be growing in the future, but it was very good. Slow burn, enemies, lovers. I really enjoyed the world that was built and how there was like a little some good twists and turns along the way that I wasn't expecting, um, but a really overall solid fantasy romance and I'm very excited to see where this goes and I also really loved Arwen's healing abilities and we just like focused on this girl that's you know working day out, day in and day out in the infirmary and um, I don't know I just feel like there was a lot of like good character development around her healing abilities which isn't always you know like the flashiest power but I, I appreciated how it was used and yeah some good some good plot twists in here. Next I read A Court of Ravens and Ruin by Eliza Rain and this was the group book. So this is um, about Reyna and she's lived as basically a human slave in the gold kingdom. Um, there are all these fae kingdoms and it, they're like connected by the tree of life so this is based on Norse mythology and so the shadow kingdom is the most feared kingdom um, but basically she gets captured by the shadow fae and he's like you're gonna be my wife. Um, so she becomes betrothed to the Shadow Prince and he's like known as being like really terrible. And so this is the story of that. And <clears throat> I ended up giving this book five stars, but it's like a, maybe like a 4.5. It's a little light on the world building. Like there definitely is some. And I will say it's probably a series where the spice is going to grow in the future. But I thought overall it was a really fun Norse mythology inspired fantasy romance. I. I'm very intrigued by the setup of this shadow court and what's going to happen with like um, our love interests like stepmother and his powers. I feel like there's a lot more to be explored and this first book was short which is probably felt why it felt a little bit surface level to me but that's okay because sometimes you're just there for like fast and easy fast paced fantasy romances like it doesn't all need to be like chunky, long, intense world building. Um, I like to read the scope of different kinds of pacing and whatnot in my fantasy romance. So I actually, I really, really liked this one. I thought it was good and I'm definitely gonna continue on. I think the second book just came out so I probably will pick that up soon on my Kindle. So next for Romanticiathon, I read Long Live the Elf Queen by J.M. Curl. And this is the second book in the Battle Before the Elf Queen series. And so in this book, we follow Layala, and she basically has known that she's been mated to the prince um, for her whole life, the elf prince. But um, when she was a baby, she was taken away by a human servant and like taken to the human lands to be raised because this king is real bad. And her parents did not want her bound to this prince. So then she always known the day would come that he would come for her and he did and he found her and but he's nothing like his father or like she expected him to be so she kind of has these plans to kill him but realizes he might not be the villain that she thinks he is. There's a lot more going on with like dark magic and elves and whatnot so this is the second book in the series and I ended up giving it four stars. I do think that this series is a lot of fun. I liked seeing um, the development of Thane and Layala's relationship further and there was some interesting twists and turns but I will say I think it was just a little bit too long for me with not enough going on. It, the plot got a little meandering in the beginning so tiny bit of middle book syndrome but it's just a long book and um, I feel like the pacing could have been tightened up a little bit more to make it flow a little bit better but overall the ending the ending was a really good lot like big plot twist that had been slowly building and I was shocked, I was shook, and it made me excited for the next one, which is good. So I think it's only going to be a trilogy. So the last book is called Fate Calls the Elf Queen. It's on the back here. Um, we don't have a cover or anything yet, but I'm excited and I will be picking it up when it comes out. Okay, and the last book I have to talk about is Vow of the Shadow King, which is the sequel to Bride of the Shadow King. And this is by Sylvia Mercedes. So I've talked about this a little bit. This is a Kindle Unlimited romance. And so Bride of the Shadow King follows Ferrain and she's basically like the rejected princess of this family. Like her parents don't really like her and they send her to live in a convent and she's not the favored princess at all. Um, and this is because she got a god's gift and the god's gift um, allows her to sense the emotions of others. Others, however, it is so like overwhelming to her. It's basically like a disability. So you can think of it as like a chronic migraine or like a chronic sensory overload. And so she goes to live in the peace and quiet of the convent. So basically her family's like, you're really not that like useful to us in the long run, but whatever, she has to come home for the troll king to come and they're gonna form an alliance with the humans because they both got problems. And so the troll king can basically pick any of the daughters to marry. There's two other daughters and he forms a connection with Ferrain, but Ferrain is basically like 
my parents don't like me so maybe don't pick me and the story just like goes from there i won't give two more i do think that the plot summary gives away a little bit too much of the plot you know what i mean um but i decided to not read the plot summary for the second one because i didn't want to be spoiled by that again and I was happy that I did that way because I was pretty shook by what was going on. I had started this one at work like a few months ago and then just put it down, but then I was like, no, I'm committed to reading this. And once I got into it, I flew through it. I just think the world building is so interesting and unique and not really something I've ever seen before because it takes place primarily um, in the second book in the troll kingdom that is like literally this underground kingdom. And they were like these, they're troll, they're like fae. That are like trolls so they come from rocks but like they're they're hot don't worry they're not like ugly trolls and so I thought that that world building was so unique and the way that Farrain has to deal with like her issues from her powers was it's so interesting to see um a story where the powers have like a, a downside to it like yeah she can sense emotions but it, like it is like a chronic condition for her and powers are usually seen as something positive so I thought that that was a really interesting spin. So overall I found the story very intriguing. The push and the pull between Vor and Ferain Vor is the the um, troll king and like his feelings for her and then we did this author I know like isn't really that spicy but she did up the spice level in this book. I still give it like one spicy spicy pepper but it was it was upped and I appreciated that and there was just she's very good at keeping the push and the pull between the different characters and i think she's kept that tension going into the third book which is the final book in the trilogy so i'm really excited for that to come out and just to see like how she's gonna wrap this all up because she's created such a unique world um such unique characters and I'm really excited to see where it goes and so yeah that was obviously five star so lots of fantasy romance books this month and lots of romance books this month I definitely like was on a romance kick and then I became on a fantasy romance kick so I don't know I feel like I tend to get into one genre and then like read it until I'm like okay I gotta switch something else and then I keep just switching back and forth that kind of seems to be my style these days which is fine so those are my thoughts for February. I'm really excited to be doing wrap ups again. I think these are actually quite fun to film as long as you don't delay them and don't have to talk about like 20 books at once. If you were wrapping up like two months, I think that's when I started to not like filming them. But this was actually very fun for me. Um, and like I said, it's the core. It's the heart of booktube. So let me know if you've read any of these books down below and what you thought of them or whatever was your favorite book in February and have some fun reading books and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah.